Abilene, Texas native Billy Gillespie. Now in his second year in Kentucky. This is the starting five that he'll bring out, minus Patrick Patterson today. And clearly this is a team that relies so heavily on Jody Meeks. Even more so today, Michael Carter will operate at the point guard. Inside, this team now will try to find some offense from Josh Harrelson. Perry Stevenson is a complimentary player that could help. And Ramon Harris, who has been uh, besieged with uh, chronic injuries throughout his career, the rest of the starting five. Rodney Clark, Stephon Welsh will have to play some of the point today with uh, the aforementioned Fortson out, along with Marcus Britt. Part of the starting five for Arkansas, Michael Sanchez, an outstanding freshman to go along with Michael Washington for John Pelfrey, who's... Uh, the head coach of the Razorbacks, and his jersey hangs from the rafters of Rupp Arena as one of the unforgettables back in 1992. Today's game is being brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, the worldwide leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television and mobile media. They've not won here, Arkansas, since 2001. Nolan Richardson was still the head coach here, and Tubby Smith was at Kentucky. Our officials today, Mike Stewart, Doug Servans, and Patrick Adams. See how Josh Harrelson responds, and of course, Marcus Britt. They're getting opportunities. Key is to take advantage. A lot of cheerleaders out here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Now, this place is special, and that's when their team is 1-8 and eight in conference play. It's a great, it always has been a great atmosphere right now. Timmy B. Arkansas goes. Wait a minute. Interesting to see the defensive assignment on uh, Meeks today, particularly with no Patrick Patterson. One would think it would might make life a lot easier from a defensive standpoint for any team. Harrelson pops out high, misses the three ball. Washington the rebound for Arkansas. Yeah, Harrelson can make that. I'm not sure they want to take it frequently, but 41% more than adequate. Welsh is going to have his hands full. Run the club and guard Meeks. What an assignment, Tim. Welsh has played the point before. Although he's a natural two. Started uh, 21 games as a point guard. And boy, does that help you too. You play it with confidence. You know you're going to run the show. And right here, this is the key. This kid attacks as well as anybody I've seen in a number of years. Meeks, that is. Stevenson, tough pass to make in traffic. Knocked away. Last touched by the Wildcats. It'll be Arkansas basketball. Ramon Harris passed out at halftime of an Alabama game earlier this year. There was nothing uh, serious about the nature of it. Apparently had a flu bug and just got caught up in the heat of the moment. He's had a concussion in the past, but his play has not been outstanding since. They're hoping that uh, mentally he can get his game going, especially without Patrick Patterson today. And, and Billy Gillespie was really concerned that Alabama said they did a great job handling the situation. And steal. Jody Meeks comes away with it. Don't leave him. Oh, please no. Oh. Uh, Rodney Clark did not get over there and recognize that he was left alone. Well, he plays with such energy, doesn't he? He really does. I, I don't know that I've ever seen an offensive player in the Southeastern Conference, Billy, have as much bounce in his game as does Jody Meeks. He just finds a way to get free. Uh, I, I would agree with you. Uh, total involvement right here, as you mentioned. Don't leave him. Step up. Let him blow by and get some assistance, but don't give him that open look. Clean look. He's too tough. And the other thing is don't cough it up if you're Arkansas, giving those open floor opportunities. Ramon Harris got the foul. Double screen slip. Pretty play. Washington beautifully off the feed from Britt. Send it in, big fella. Well executed. Big thing when you don't have the uh, the sure out inside, you've got to create offense someplace else. Stevenson has to look at this screen oh, by Harrelson. What a pick by Harrelson. Unerring. And Meeks gets the easy one. And it's 4-2 Kentucky. Well, Harrelson knows what he's out there for. Bites you once in a while with a shot. Provides some great screens, rebound, play good day. He's got Washington. Uh, Clark is a designated outside shooter. If he gets hot, he can really light it up. He struggled with his shot a bit of late. Here's Sanchez. Played well in the non-conference. Has struggled in conference play, and he's rejected. Stevenson again. Look, don't back up on this guy. Oh, he's, he's, he's just too good. He's unbelievable. And now he's got you right where he's got you in the rocker chair. Bring you up, suck you in, and blow by. He has all seven. 
for three from the floor already for Jody Meeks. Britt on a little stop and go. Past Harrelson. Nice defensive work. It's run down by Washington. Nice kick. Sanchez turned down a shot, gave it to Welsh. I don't know why Sanchez turned down that open look. Well, he's a team player. <laughs> we can learn something from that. Harrelson, too strong. Sanchez, the rebound. Sanchez got those five stitches last game. The badge of honor out there. Now, a tough one with Auburn. Arkansas has had a consistency of getting leads this year and not being able to finish, which is uh, something you generally see when you're having to start three freshmen, as right this team has for the bulk of the season. There's a foul off the ball. I believe they tag Harrelson. I think you're right, Tim. Uh, that's, that's that little back screen on the postman, and then you get a down screen to get Clark a clean look. Jason Henry, long athletic freshman from West Memphis, Arkansas, has seen some starting time today comes into the game for Marcus Britt. But what jumps out at you, Tim, when you watch tape is Kentucky's man-to-man -man defense. Billy Gillespie did it at AM and they just get into you. You know, he's almost been coach of the year more than he's been a coach in every place. Texas El Paso, Texas AM. Kentucky, nice move by Washington again. It's 7 to 4, Kentucky. That's what he is saying. Just so many things. Tough shot by Brett. That's not the kind of goal you're looking for. Stevenson gets the offensive rebound. Too strong with the putback. Henry clears for Arkansas. He's got open gates. Loves to run. Open luck. Clark loves that spot, but it's an air ball. Pull down Henry. Knocked away. Good work defensively by Stevenson. The fans wanted a foul. And Kentucky wants to run their stuff. Get some good solid looks. Don't go wire to wire with this team. But Henry Kidd has played very well of late off that knee surgery. Hobbling just a little bit, but what a nice talent. Porter. Now, he made some big shots early in the game with Florida. Of course, Galloway had his uh, career, Best game, right? career game. But Six that, points, eight boards, and nine assists. Some non-scorers for Kentucky with Patterson out have got to produce today. But you also have to know your shot. That was Porter's shot. The last runner was not his shot. Wide now, wait for the kick out. Sanchez, right to the rack, off the glass. Now look at Meeks use his screens. Stevenson doubled. That's Porter's shot. Again, they will take those open three balls and make Arkansas respect someone other than Meeks. Do you remember what John Puffer said yesterday about being more comfortable yes. on the road for other guys right. because there's so many demands at home? Interesting. I mentioned that to Mike Pratt. Great talent and longtime radio. Well, he was yeah, part of He said that they don't believe that at all. <laughs> you got to be able to shoot it all. Mike's, Mike's having a difficult year because the dynamic duo of Patterson and Sanchez, it's the dynamic duo of Patterson and Meeks are eclipsing Issel and Pratt oh. from the good old days. It was more Issel. <laughs> don't tell him I said that. Nice clear out. Porter takes it right into traffic. No whistle. And Clark comes out of there with it. Good handle. More than just a shooter. And that's what he's done. He's expanded his game. You know he can shoot. Now he's got you under control. A little blow by by the little guy. Goaltending the call. Rodney putting it on the deck. A little show and go. 13-10 Kentucky. Outstanding. Uh, positions might be this fellow. A candidate for a lot of awards at the end of the year. You just can't relax and step back. He's got the ability to drill the freeze jumper here using screens beautifully. Once again, you relax, step back. You're afraid of him going to the rim. I'd rather him go to the rim. Maybe he can get some help. Uh, he's got a gorgeous stroke. And as we noted, he enjoys what he's doing. He's got a lot of energy out there. You think of a lot of the player of the year candidates out there. Blake Griffin being one, Hashim Khabib another. Ranked teams all, but Kentucky's struggles, in my estimation, should not limit this guy from consideration. He's got to be first team All-America and should be considered for player of the year. One of our colleagues, Jimmy Dykes, had that game when he exploded against Tennessee, and it's the first thing he said. He's uh, just put this team on his shoulder when Patterson is sloughed on and yeah. not able to get touches. He has stepped up magnificently. Oh, this is Jimmy's home. We're here in Fayetteville. Yeah, that's right. He played for Eddie Sutton here. Later coached at Kentucky with Eddie. 
Six and a half minutes gone by. Here in the first half, there's Porter, bad pass, trying to get it into Harris. Henry comes away with it. Oh, nice deflection from the rear by Harris. Meeks, head always up. Look, Look out, it. he's launching. Count it, a little nylon song by way of Kentucky. Most guys, when you say head up, they're looking to make a delivery. Pass to somebody. This guy can burn you in so many ways. Four for four from the floor already. And range, Timmy. Now tough shot. Henry got a little more glass than expected. There's that triple hand off. Look out! Look out! Oh, move over, Reggie Miller. How the about kick out three? Oh. Well, they run that play beautifully. Dribble handoff. Now you can either have to switch it or trap it. And this guy right here, you can just see, nobody prepared. And again, oh. he didn't stick the leg out, though. A lot no, of guys are going to get caught for that. I know, they, but he, yeah. he got bumped big time. And John is like, fellas, you've got to keep that ball out of his hands. Well, he knows what you, they walk through it. They discuss it. They look at tape. And you're prepared for that situation. But great players just step up and overachieve. 14 of the Kentucky 20. And it's a 10-point lead now. 20-10 our score. There's that back screen and then down screen. They just can't get out of passing lane. Shot not there for Welsh. Now, Welsh is really working hard, but there's a series of bumps you're going to have to handle. Here's the show. Good job by Sanchez. They need more of that. The pressure is relentless being uh, brought by Meeks. Yeah. He's usually perpetual motion off the ball. To stay with him is a very difficult thing to do. Shot clock down to seven. He's got oh, and oh, Harrison with a left forearm shiver. On that pick, his second foul as uh, Stefan Welsh hits the deck. Never got quite stationary on that particular pick. But come in. Uh, just they got to give him a step. I think it was just yeah. the quickness of it, don't you? I thought he may have gotten him with his arm, but he did not. Yeah, it was just late getting there. In the NBA, there'd be an argument. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you? Uh, you've got to call that out and let me know. Communicate. Exactly. I need my teeth. Kentucky is 5 of 6 from downtown. Arkansas 0 for 5. Razorbacks have lived in the paint. There's Clark. Look out. Now he is um, he's one of these sharp shooters that once he gets going, that lid will expand quite a bit. Uh, he's worked hard at getting free and using screens. Porter tagged him on the hip, but tardy in his recovery. John Pelfrey compares him favorably with his old teammate and now Oklahoma State coach Travis Ford. Look at this one. Turnover. Well, you mentioned Clark, 40 points a game and once had in the 60s. Tough to contend with. Good start by the Cats. Eight and a half minutes gone. We'll be back. Give me a trip to Boulder's Roll. Uh -oh, anytime. I'll remind you of that. Speaking of trips, uh, this guy's <laughs> had a wonderful trip in his coaching career. And one of the biggest decisions is to take a guy off your team for reasons that are just between you two. Yes. Uh, maybe not maturing, not the growth that Courtney Fortune was expected to have. And here they go, well prepared, the difficulty in scoring. They've been able to dribble drive on occasion to get to the rim. They did try a little 2-3 zone, that, which Florida had some success with. See if they go back to that. Washington lost it, stripped by A.J. Stewart, then the rejection by Stevenson. He is amazing, huh? Terrific reaction. Uh, you got to give credit to John Pelfrey. The foundation of a program is based on thinking big picture as well as trying to win games. And that's what he that's what he decided to do with the forts and his Stewart pops out high and pick up a three ball and it's 23 to 13. It's all about principles. Uh, kids buy in. They know what you're like when you recruit them. You've got to understand it and fulfill your obligations. Kentucky now six of seven from downtown. So the defending of the three ball has not been there and another poor pass. Nice run. Not a good look though. Sanchez comes away with it now. Stefan Welsh. Oh, 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 French pastry. And the follow by Henry. The foul. Wave off the putback. He'll get to the strike. Oh, the French pastry there. <laughs> All right, Al. You can't use that without giving Al the contribution.
exactly. Absolutely. That's, when you use it like that, that's the proper yeah. utilization. Yeah. The only way he could have gotten by his guy and against a great shot blocker as well. I always have memories of Al, and uh, particularly here. We worked a game many years ago when we were working the Nothing like Al McGuire on the loose in Fayetteville, Arkansas. <laughs> on the loose any place in the USA. Uh, really uh, with mirrors today for John Pelfrey. He's putting people in and out. Uh, Jason Henry, you mentioned uh, when he walked yesterday at practice, and they were chatting with him down there, he looked uncomfortable. When he ran, he was fine. You know, that stroke early in the year. A little pressure, first time. 2-2-1, two, two, and this is what you have. Back up to man. The Billy D influence. What do you think? Uh, or Ricky P. Yeah, Ricky P, too. Darius Miller is on the floor, number one for Kentucky, along with Porter, Stevenson, AJ. There's Meeks, and a oh, nice play defensively by Clark, and another strip, this one by Walsh. That's preparation. Puffrey had talked to them. They mishandled it earlier, gave a clean three. Boy, Meeks needs some dental work after that pick by Sanchez. And a foul spotted underneath it will go against A.J. Stewart, his second. And the ability to react properly on the defensive end. You see the quick hands, but that's all set up by that dribble exchange being prepared to expose it. Five team fouls now committed by Kentucky. Arkansas will trigger it in underneath their own hoop. And you see Porter really trail on him. You've got to have some foot speed. Put it on the deck. Skip pass, taken in by Britt. Not really a threat to shoot. And they get it into stuff on Walsh's hands at the point. Washington drifting. They got him if they want. There he is. And he can make that. Oh, and they did not catch up. They did not catch up. Nice play by Sanchez here. Run down by Miller. Well, he's the beat potatoes guy. He's helped out on the defensive end. Pretty aggressive around the glass. off the curl with the bounce. So you know, Timmy, at some point, there's a foul from Stevenson. At some point that far out, you've got to go under the screen. He's not going to make the jump shot that far out. You've got to go under and then get him on the other side. What a heck of an arrow, huh? Uh, but th this is something you give him this opportunity more often than not. He's going to have a little nylon. Uh, the first miss of the day for Jody Meeks. You see the team foul story. Only one committed by the Razorbacks, and as hard as they're playing on the defensive end the last few minutes, that says a lot. He, he, you probably think he went out because he missed the shot. Huh? <laughs> Shuffle cut, ball screen. And then the pop. you got to give it to him when he was free. Nice lean in. Porter will get the foul. Smart, Smart play by Rodney Clark. I thought he should have given it quicker, though, because Washington had a very clean look. Uh, this is, as he drifts this way, and of course, you, when you're a good shooter, you can get people to bite. Porter Airborne and Rodney to the line. Short of a miserable outing against Tennessee, a game that Arkansas could have won, wound up losing by two about ten days ago. Clark has been uh, red hot. Bruce Pearl got a, out of here with a steal a week ago Wednesday. He did, no question about it. But here's a kid, uh, one of the local scribes, he, after a tough game, he took 50 extra threes. And the writer asked him, how'd you do? He said, I only made 47. <laughs> that's, a bad, uh, that's pretty good, I guess. But not when you excel with the stroke. Brandon Moore, number 11, is coming to the game now, replacing Sanchez. Moore, another freshman. This team got so young, so fast. I tell you, as they mature, they will become relevant again. And once they do, look out. This conference becomes so much better when Arkansas basketball is relevant. A fast break, hit that post and go to the rim. I think it's underneath. I think Washington got a clean. Oh, they yeah. gave it to him. They did. Wow, I thought underneath. First and foul on Michael Washington. Anytime you hit the post, you got a fast break. And wow. Well, I thought I thought, it, I thought the reach was Brandon Moore's rather than Washington's. If the foul went on anyone, it should have been on the uh, the reach in by Brandon Moore. And I think that's what John Pelfrey's trying to point out to Pat Adams, one of the officials. 
because he cannot afford to use Washington. Any no. gift foul attributed to Washington is going to cost Pelfrey dearly today. And you look over there in the radio booth, Mike Nail and his partner, Rick Schaefer. See how distant they are apart. We have a much better relationship, obviously. That's why the company only puts us together once every two years. Uh, it's been fun, though. <laughs> Great couple of days. Yes, indeed. Reminiscent. I go back to Nolan's days here, too. Some outstanding games. That great coach. Rodney Clark. Oh, the iron unkind. And it's pulled down by Stevenson. A little bit of a matchup right now. Miller rolling Dervish and he's rejected, but a foul. They're going to whistle a body on Marcus Britt. His second. Uh, trying to confuse him just a little bit with the defense. And you don't want to foul if you're Britt when you've got this individual yeah. looming. Yeah, the eraser uh, is there. Uh, he's not been on the floor enough probably to understand, although, you know, Britt being force-fed today. Oh, Darius Miller, former Kentucky Mr. Basketball at the free throw line. Well, what makes the amazing race amazing? Two ordinary people in a starting line with nothing but the whole world in front of them. A brand new adventure begins tomorrow on CBS, America's most watched network. Uh, Miller, not a great three-point shooter. Mid-range kind of a game. I think he's got a big upside, though. Well, it's those guys that have the opportunity to pull up to take those mid-range jumpers that could really help this Kentucky team. It's minus Patrick Patterson today. Their inside game is, is going to be uh, limited, to say the least. And this is what I love about Meeks. He's now playing Clark. And watch how he meets him on the catch if you reverse it. Well, in traffic, Miller comes over to tie him up. The possession arrow to the Razorbacks. Boy, nothing easy against Kentucky. Well, they really rally at the point of attack. Use the dribble. Clark off the pick from Washington. But the crowd is ready to erupt and just rushing in him a little. And Meeks slid under, almost paid for it. You see uh, coming back onto the floor for Kentucky, Ramon Harris. Have no points in the paint. Zero for Kentucky today. Here's the exchange. Nice dump down to Miller, but he put it on the deck for the double team. Don't leave Meeks. Harris lost it. Stevenson saves it. There's Meeks over Clark. Uh, it's unbelievable. You don't leave that kid. I mean, he's utterly, I mean, you don't look to help out. You're in a matchup zone. Let other people work underneath. We've seen a lot in this conference since the 54-point barrage against Tennessee. A lot of boxing ones, a lot of uh, man principles, but with a shadowing sort of defender, Bill, where you just absolutely never let him go, keeping him in front, in front of you all the time. Mississippi State, for example, did a great job with Patterson, right? Right. Uh, but give me your line, the boxing one. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, Tom Leach came over. And Tom Leach is at the box, but the box is on. The box is on the uh, uh, on Meeks, and, and one guy's on the other. Uh, there's a nice tip in. Oh, Henry, Jason Henry. Now Henry knows he's got to stay at home, so it's going to be a lot of pressure on Washington inside. Ball was knocked away by the Hogs. Kentucky will have it with 26 to shoot when we come back. Well, the ability to read exactly what people are going to run, and this is just preparation. Just splitting defenders, takes the shortcut, beat you in, beat you out, beat you in the middle, and beat you on the D. Those were the first points in the paint for Kentucky, and uh, to no one's surprise, they belong to Meeks. See the turnover story. And you notice John Pelfrey was a little bit upset. That's because they didn't run the set properly, did not Washington with a leaner. Not there, and the foul will go against Sanchez over Miller. And First trying, foul on Sanchez. Trying to get it all on one trip there. And not a good play by a guy of that talent, Washington's. 
Tim Brando, Bo Raftery, happy to have you with us in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The Razorbacks looking for their second conference win of the year against a Kentucky team that is, as they say, dangling right around March's bubble. Miller, too strong. And Miller got that and the follow simply because of the way they played Meeks. And look at this. Oh, uh, look out. Not there. Rebound to Harris. Ooh. Stevenson tries to run down the Eric pass. Tried to save it, but it was uh, brought in by Henry, who had some Velcro that time to hold on. Way too strong. Stays with it, though. Don't be in a hurry. Bring it back out. They get a jump ball out. Of it. And the arrow is to Kentucky. And uh, outside, Clark had his feet set. The puppies organized. They're rushing by now. Don't you think they're breaking yeah. down, just trying to force the issue against an extraordinary defensive team? A little strip, Stevenson with the hands, but look at all the blue shirts around the ball. Andre Clark, seldom used freshman from North Little Rock, Arkansas, coming into the game, averaging just over a couple of points per game. A lot of seldom used guys will have to play. Now they're down to eight scholarship players, Arkansas, after the loss of Marcus Monk. That was announced yesterday, and of course, now you see the bucket by Porter, who has been serviceable. He's got eight today, so he's stepping his game up a little bit. It's all mixed up. He dragged the wing all the way through. It's in a box on this side. Almost a box of one situation, even though they're in a matchup. He drags too many people. Critically, you know we're early, but under five minutes to play. This team without its engine, without Fortson, there you go. Hang in. There's Washington. Nice move. Counted and a foul. That's what they have to do. They did it earlier using the bounce to ecstasy. The blow by by the big fella. And we saw this earlier in the game, and right here, they're not able to get set up to pick up the charge. Uh, something I'm sure will be discussed with Darius Miller by Billy Gillespie. I mean, I know it's early in the game, but that was a big sequence for Arkansas. They needed to get a good look, maintain contact with this team, because without Fortson, who is the uh, straw that stirs the drink for this club, has been all year, you want to maintain the contact, not get down by 16, 18 points, not with a team that's got a player like Meeks. Now, Welsh is on Meeks in the far corner in this matchup now. now he Wherever Meeks goes, it opens up holes for other people. Meeks in traffic just doesn't matter. It's going up. Clark gets the rebound. It's a good shot, and it's always got a chance. You ever notice? That's right. It's not forced. There is traffic. It is contested, but it's pure. And as an offensive rebounder, Bill, you know you know about where you should wind up. Walsh is rejected by Stevenson. There's Meeks on the run out. Oh, it's got to be Russell. It's got to be. Oh, boy. And count the basket. Britt just wrapped him up, made no play on the ball whatsoever. You, you know, you talk about speed, strength, his ability to shoot the ball. He reads things beautifully. He knew as soon as the block occurred that he was going to get out and be an outlet and a recipient. And the strength, you got to take this kid to the mat. He's going to go and bring you up to the rim. Strength and talent. Pretty good combination. Up to three fouls now on Britt as John Pelfrey has a meeting. 21 points on 8 of 11 shooting now for Meeks. And Arkansas with 22. So, as they say single-handedly, it's a dead heat between the home team and Meeks. You know, you, you think of his scoring, though. His are meaningful baskets. He's not a high scorer that just is a scorer. Yeah. I mean, they come at junctures in the game that enable them to either sustain the lead or get back in it. Wow. The worst thing about missing that... Well, coming up on AT&T at the half, Brett Gumbel, Seth Davis will get you caught up on all the scores and highlights from a busy day in college hoops. On the latest AT&T Naismith watch, that's all coming up on at the half with Brett Gumbel and Seth Davis. Speaking about strength and finesse, those two in the studio, so, right? right? Without question. I'll tell you, the more you see Meeks, it's just amazing what he can do on the basketball floor. Very alert, attuned to what's going on. corner. You commit an intentional foul and they give up the hoop with the horn. 
That's a, this could be a bitter pill for Arkansas. We were talking about how critical it was for them to stay within, say, 10 points of this team. Nice pass. Look at that. A productive trip, wouldn't you say? Harris, the deuce, he has a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. This could be a seven to eight-point trip down the floor. And Porter, the guy finding people. Oh, because Meeks in the far corner. The pass pass. The ability to finish. Solid play. Shot blocking with Stevenson. You know, this conference, Mississippi State number one in shot blocks. Kentucky three, UConn in that second spot. You don't get anything easy around the rim. Well, Bernardo is one of the most unheralded big players in the country. And he's become a pretty good offensive player, yes, he too. He has. They played uh, a tremendous game against LSU and what might have been one of the great games no one had a chance to see this year. Uh, double overtime win, Tasman Mitchell had 41 for LSU. They fouled a number of kids out. Uh, they lost their point guard. Bo Spencer still managed to win the game. And Trent Johnson's club has got a certain case for being in the top 25. Well, they, they sure did. And Bo Spencer, you mentioned, he's really been solid. We know Thornton can score. He's been terrific. Temple. Uh, just And then speaking of shot blocking, the big guy in the middle, huh? Indeed. Uh, yeah, Chris, big Chris. Arkansas was to within five. It was 23-18 at one point. And now after that six-point trip by Kentucky, they really need a hoop. Uh, did they? Nice little down screen. Turnout. And this is the end they've struggled. The matchup's like Swiss cheese. Now they're straight up. Even though they may have been fatigued, it wasn't worth it. I always thought of you as more of a berries and cream guy. <laughs> Uh, what's the winding cheese said, as uh, Sam Cassell said, right down at the Smith Center. Henry gets the rebound. Outlet to Welsh. Knocked away by Galloway. Good quick hands by Kentucky. And Galloway, you mentioned how well he played against Florida. If they, if they can get some pieces to add on to the stars for Kentucky, Patterson and Meeks, obviously, uh, they can do some damage as the NCAA starts because they guard so well. Yeah, the, the thought has been that these two players, Meeks and Patterson, could start for anyone in the country, and then the other three were like, okay, who are these guys? Who are these masked men to speak of? Uh, great defense inside. Henry, right to the rack. And Story, a terrific block, just couldn't do it the second time. His athleticism coming to the forefront. Jason Henry has seven, and the lead down to ten. Nice give back. Harris. Nice check out by Sanchez. Rodney Clark is on the loose. They don't have to be in a hurry. This is a big goal for them. He'll take it now. He's moving. Nice hustle by Henry. Now he pumps the three. Too strong. Porter comes down with a rebound. Numbers. Oh, good. oh, you had Meeks on the other side. Uh, yeah, he had numbers. He uh, simply, Jody's looking at him like, huh? He's, He's looking at Gillespie <laughs> saying, doesn't even remember who I am. Uh, Michael Porter makes a lot of good decisions for this team. He had football vision on that yes, one. Yes, he did. He didn't want to get hit. He went for the... Uh, the 10-yard curl instead of the five-yard out. Exactly. You know, it's almost like, when well, the guy on the left's my roommate. I better give it to him. But Meeks is your bread and butter. Just over two minutes to play. They're calling the Hawks here at the Bud Arena. Arkansas, 2 13 from downtown. Clark looks to a nice pump. Short again. Yeah. Wow. Nothing but air. Harris the rebound. In a hurry. Now, he was really inhaling at a timeout, Clark. Part of not shooting well is fatigue. DeAndre Liggins, number 34, is coming to the game. Miller left wide open. And Welsh is shadowing Meeks now off the ball. Up at the top of the screen. Miller. Wow, does that help out, huh? Uh, unable to make them deep. 20% from deep. A questionable shooting, but who knows? This team starts to get some confidence. They are 8 of 11 now from downtown Kentucky. Well, Stewart made one earlier. That was his first of the year. One for two. Sanchez pumps. Big Blue lead it by 11 with just over 60 ticks remaining. Sanchez has six on the day. Harris is left free. See, if I'm the opposition, anytime anybody else shoots it from out here, number 23's not. And not that's demeaning anybody, but I think he deserves a touch on Trent. Would you agree? Absolutely. Here's that dribble handoff sequence. Once in a while, they use a high-five bump. 
Ramon Harris from downtown. See, now that, that to me, I like that. Yeah. And that's not saying that Harris can't make him. It's almost as if they're trying to remain in the game by taking shots that they don't have to take. Right. And, he, and he's not a great three-point shooter either. At 16%. Shot clock, game clock, essentially the same. The Razorbacks can hold it for the last one. And don't give them another chance. That's what I would do. Neat Neat stay here or get to nine. Meeks has 22. The rest of the big blue, 18 as a team. Well too early. Oh, way too early. Especially for this guy. He's, uh, he's made him before. We found his rage. <laughs> maybe not his rage. That's the end of the half. Kentucky leads it 40 to 29. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York with AT&T at the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. 40 to 29, Kentucky with the lead here at halftime. Tim Brando, Bill Raftery, happy to have you with us. Normally when you're down to just one rare, rare option to score, it's going to be more difficult, but not for Jody Meeks. Unbelievable, his ability to get <laughs> himself set up and then find him. Oh. Uh, his shot selection is extraordinary. They actually passed him up once. You can get suspended from school for that. Uh, take a look at this, uh, Timmy. Uh, his range is incredible. Four for six from three. Eight for 11 overall. The breakaway where he took half, well, not half, but uh, went to the 10 and took one of the Arkansas players with him in a strong fashion. This kid has got it all. Understands how to play. Great awareness. That steal when he read the play. Clark anticipating a pop out. Just solid. He's had 30-plus uh, point performances six times this year and has been dangerously close to a seventh and an eighth. As you look at our Hartford first-half stats, turnover issue has been really a problem. And I think a lot of times, uh, <laughs> if you're Billy Gillespie, you're saying to your guards, please, please, Make sure 23 touches it. If he's around. Yeah. And once in a while, I think they forget on the offensive end. Uh, it's not a democracy when you got a guy like Jody Meeks. Those points in the paint, Bill, the one area you mentioned earlier, Kentucky can be beaten to the 10 defensively if you have if you have big men that can put it on the deck. And Washington can. And one of the, look at this unfortunate turnover without a shot. Those are the ones that kill you. And they... Shaded Washington, so he kicked it out and was ready to repost. Much to the chagrin of John Pelfrey. Look at how, look how far away they're playing the perimeter guy, other than this guy. And that opens up passing lane. Now, this is a guy, and you said last year, he started to score at the end of the year when Patterson was out. Yeah, he almost oh. averaged the double-double on the putback. A foul will be spotted underneath. And nine points a game, nine rebounds after Patterson was out. Washington gets his second. And that's important because uh, without Michael Washington inside, they, they could be in real trouble. He picked up a cheap foul that I, I felt maybe he did not earn. It should have been a reach in on um, Brandon Moore earlier. They've got to keep him eligible to have any chance at all in this game. Well, it's the we're saying defensive rebounding are the key ingredients. And defense has been solid because of Stevenson. His presence getting a piece or changing things around the rim. See if uh, Stefan Welsh's motor will pick up in the second half. There's a nice crossover move right to the rack. And he really went at the numbers, too, just to get the hit and get a chance to get to the free throw line. It's not as if he can't create openings, this man. Well, the difficulty is he's got to guard a number 23 at the other end. And that becomes fatiguing and still run the set. Normally, he's off the ball uh, with Fortson running in, unfortunately, as we chronicled earlier. Fortson, because of uh, judgment made by John Pelfrey, making sure next year or at the end of this year his head is sound and he grows in the fashion that they would like. This young man, Stefan Welch, has had some big shots this year, including a game winner against South Alabama. He was a highly recruited player out of Oakport News, Virginia. Comes up dry at the strike. You're right. When you concentrate so much on this end of the floor, it's generally going to take something out of you on the other end. And look at that bump. Miller. See, now that, that's smart basketball. They are not playing until they... Why not take it in another bounce if you're Miller? Yeah. Get it not easy, easy. You don't need the three. Can Welsh create an opening for Washington? Again, takes it in strong. That's going to be a tie ball with the arrow to Kentucky. Pretty good job by Miller. A little bigger. Can give ground. 
and still get to the point of attack. It's as if uh, John Pelfrey wants to bring some pressure. He said yesterday he'd like to bring pressure, but don't give up opportunities the other end. Passive type. Kentucky started 8 of 10 from downtown with the help of Leeds. They've now missed their last four as a team. Porter hit a couple of them in the first half. Everybody inside the three-point line except Welsh on Meeks. Park's making a liar out of me. Here's the show by Washington, but again he got away, and Welsh, <laughs> Welsh just slipped. He could not stay with him. Magic. Wow. Strength. Confidence. He doesn't need bumps half the time. We may be talking about eclipsing 54 before it's done. He's got that look in his eye. Well, if there's any talking, I know you'll be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too. Oh, well. he, he is in me. What a pleasure to watch, too. Nice look. Washington, beautiful bounce pass. Threaded in there to Sanchez. Henry with a great read. A little bit of a junk man, huh? Does a nice number of things. Nobody coming out. Washington just looming low. Now they get the high bump. You see how they play it. Oh, what a cross. What a cross. Oh, 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 oh. How good, how good is Jody Meeks? How, oh, my goodness. A little lingerie on the deck. Oh. Oh, that is no longer Victoria's Secret. <laughs> oh, how Show good it. is that? Show it and take it away. Oh. Jody, don't do it to me. Oh. oh, my goodness. Does not get any better than this. Get the janitor to me, B. Pick up the lingerie. <laughs> Back to Fayetteville, Tim and Rap. All right, Greg, thank you. Uh, Georgetown team that is looking uh, to right the ship, much like Notre Dame did earlier in the week against Louisville. That's a big game for both of those clubs. Yep. And uh, speaking about big game, big game Jody. Uh, this has just been electrifying to see him get free, now using the dribble, disdaining screens. Such a talent. It's as if he heard me say he may go for more than 54 today. Well, I'm sure he'll look at the tape. Boy, oh boy. But only only 16 though. So if you're if you're Arkansas, you're still go your much in it. Right, yes. go to your strength, which is Washington. Give him some touches now. Henry over Harris, not there. Marcus Britt comes away with the rebound. Rockley Clark on the floor along with Sanchez, Washington, and Jason Henry the five on the floor for the Razorbacks. Arkansas had success driving the ball in the first half. Have not done much of it. Here's one here. And look who's right there, Stevenson. Is he tough? I know the foul occurred on the bottom. Tale of two seasons for these Hawks, 12-1, and one, including non-conference wins against both Texas and Oklahoma. And then the conference season began, and uh, they became a very young team very quickly. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, Enigmatic, too, when you think about the league uh, being, I think, by most pundits, down somewhat in a bit of a down cycle. Not because the the talent's not here. It's just a cyclical, and it's very young all at once. And there's coaching transitions. There are only five coaches in the SEC that have been at their respective schools for two or more years. Billy Donovan's the senior citizen. That's right, right. Billy the kid. But you know, you, you it's a league. I mean, the competition is extraordinary. Mississippi State they start with, and all of a sudden Ole Miss on the road and they lose. I think the loss here at home to Auburn really was the one that was difficult for Arkansas to get. Past. And by the way, Jeff Lebo has done a very nice job on the planes with that young team. Does not have a player over 6-7. Uh, not a good gamble. You sell out. Give an open look here. Porter. Good check out. But get the ball. Harris keeps it alive and puts it through. Well, everybody checked beautifully like a clinic. But you still got to get it. And that was that matchup last trip. And uh, Meeks gets free and helps others. If he doesn't get free. Clark over Porter. And they needed that one and look out because he can score in bunches. The concern against Kentucky is you give them right up and makes a jumper against this press till they get back. Tag him, stay at home. Kick it out. Well 
to shoot, and 23 hasn't touched it yet. Big thing is rebounding now. Kentucky against this defense should be able to get some offensive rebounds. Stevenson not there. Jason Henry ripping down the rebound again. Hey, he's played well for Arkansas since coming into the game. Did not start, but he has been effective since coming in. Boy, Stevenson denied great in the low box area against Washington. Here he does the whole trip, checks him out. What a great effort. Pencil thin, but hitting. A little like when you think about it, uh, Stevenson, is, uh, his body type really does remind you a lot of Tayshawn Prince. Uh, not quite the offensive no. mix. Well, this guy's got mixed, though, but they got out quick, Clark. Steal by Meeks. Give it up. That's not your game. Not it, baby. Meeks in traffic that time. First time you could actually say he may have rushed it a little. I thought he got banged, too, though. Rip on the deck. Gives it up to Sanchez. So the first time that Jody appeared to maybe force the issue a little. Yeah, he left his feet. There's their stack series. Ball screen. This is when Clark is dangerous, but they stay at home on the wing with Porter. Sanchez, sort of a pick-and-pop guy. This time decides to put it on the deck and drive to the basket. Foul prior to the shot. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local CBS station. Along with Bill Raffrey, Tim Brando, and it has been such a show put on by Jody, Jody, Jody. It, it, seldom are you upstage, Timmy B, <laughs> but today you are. Say it isn't so. Get the puppy set and organized. Tremendous range, leg strength to elevate. Extraordinary understanding of what the people are running. Stepping into passing lanes. And the consummate teammate. And look at these single season leaders right up there with the great Dan Issel. Yeah, and you know, that was a 38-year-old record he broke. It's amazing. And then he had the 54 in Knoxville. And Cliff wasn't a bad player. Either. No, he wasn't. Later on with St. Louis and the athletic director for a while at Kentucky. Take it a step further, too, Bill. In the history of this conference, it has seen its fair share of great scores. Beginning, of course, with the, the all-time pistol. The pistol, Pete yeah. Maravich, but uh, Gerald Glass at Ole Miss. Remember oh, yeah. him? I sure Outstanding do. player, Chris the Jackson. Chris Later, yeah. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Uh, there have been, this guy is of that ilk. He yep. has the ability to absolutely take over any game at any time. They counted that with Arkansas with an offensive foul. Don't get a shot. We've seen that on a couple of opportunities where they've buffed it up. And don't get a shot when you're trying to come back. They're very important. And know where Meeks is. Wasn't it? Oh, now that's 36, and we're still counting with plenty of time to play. Wow, you got your calculator? Yeah. And all within the scope of the offense. You know, you yeah. mentioned once he jumped up and maybe elevated, didn't make a great decision, but yeah, he lets the game he lets the game come to him and yet dominates. Mm -hmm. He can become a great play-by-play -play guy. <laughs> <laughs> Shot clock under 10. Washington stepping out. He's just so frustrated trying to get an open look. Finally does and drains it. That was a two. He's inside talent. the arc. We haven't seen much of his ability, but this kid has really improved his game. Well, the loss of Fortson really will uh, give uh, Washington some difficulty because he needs Courtney Fortson to help create those open looks for him. And yeah, nice hands defensively. No, you're right. He gets that little slip pass to Washington. Well, visit CBSSports.com for a wrap-up of all the day's NCAA basketball action. Get the latest scores and stats, video highlights, and in-depth analysis from our team of experts only at CBSSports.com. Jason Horowitz and our friends. Jason. Yes, indeed. Spent a lot of time with Jason. Star of the future. Yeah. Very talented young guy. Harrelson denied by Washington. Stayed with it, though. Nice defensive work by Michael Washington out to Welsh. A little spurt. Oh, yeah. Beautiful move by Stefan Welsh. You see who was at the rim, Washington, in case it was a miss. Eight points for Stefan Welsh, and it's a 17-point game. A little energy now back in Bob Walton Arena. Meeks gets the bump and is denied by Washington. Billy Gillespie says, slow it down, fellas. Let's get something organized. I don't think he said that. It was Harrison was ready to shoot that one. <laughs> get, it to this, it a little differently. Yeah, get it to this guy. Just oh. too strong that time. Washington clears. 
That may be the worst miss we've seen from him. Yeah, a little bit off the mark. Usually he's right around the front of the rim. It's very rare his ball is not inside the cylinder. It's not right or left. It's yes. short or long. Once again, Washington drifting on that ball screen. Oh, you should have thrown it to him. Well, wow. nice step up. 61-46. Razorbacks trying to creep back. Ten in the game for Welsh. Stevenson feeds Harris. He's fouled. Nice inside play there, huh, Stevenson? So he's so used to making plays to Patterson. He's a terrific passer. How about that? With the hustle, while we mentioned his ability, just hanging tough. And what I love the most, he's at the rim on this layup. This is amazing. You'll see double zero coming right into the picture. That's a special talent. Get the puppies up and down like that. Welsh got the foul, his second. And uh, Andre Clark re-enters the game to give Washington a rest before the uh, eight-minute timeout area creeps up. So they want to give him an uh, opportunity for an extra rest for the stretch run. I'm sure Billy's searching for guys like Ramon Harris and others to give them a little lift as they come down the stretch. Just a level of consistency from exactly. those complimentary players. Yeah, exactly. And you see uh, Darius Miller re-entering the game. Harrelson sits down. 62-46, 8.35 and counting here in Fayetteville. And Miller's got a little step-back shot. Can bite you a little bit deep. Henry back on the floor for the Hogs, number one. And Clark with a little ball screen. Brandon Moore gives it up to Henry. Jason drains the train. Boy, I love their attitude, though. You can put your head down and bury it the way Meeks has played, but no, not a good foul there by Clark. Back up. <laughs> Billy Gillespie's that that was not a foul. I saw a bump, didn't you? Listen to this crowd. And this Great. is a one and eight team in the SEC. An offensive foul by Meeks. One of the few times he got frustrated by Welsh. You know, just the discard. The legendary Frank Boyles, the old redhead of football, envisioned this. You can be great in football and great in basketball. And this environment is just that. What a special place. We'll be back. Right, the Hall of Famer, thank you, Greg. The Hall of Famer, uh, Jim Beheim, with a much-needed win. If you look at our game summary here, three-point shooting has been all with Kentucky, and Arkansas has turned it over 12 times. It's turned into 23 points for Kentucky, and again, they've got to limit that the rest of the way. But this crowd, Billy, is really providing a spark for Arkansas in the late stages. And, and Welsh is one of the reasons they're all excited now because he did a nice job. That under the skin of Jody Meeks, which is very difficult to do, created that foul, ensuing turnover, and now they've got to be solid on the offensive end. And, and Tim, at some point, they've got to get some easy baskets if they're going to win this, though. Off the defense or a run out, something of that sort, besides guarding Jody Meeks down the stretch. Andre Clark is on the floor, along with Brandon Moore, Britt. Joined up with Jason Henry and Stefan Welsh at the point. Henry pulling the trigger, not there. Loose ball taken away by Miller. Uh, Jody Meeks gambled, and you think you just got the right to nail that jumper. I would have preferred just running some stuff, not the quick jack. Cross screen. A uh, little uh, nickel dimer in there. It's an interesting lineup, too, Bill, when you think about it. Foul goes against Welsh. Without uh, either Washington inside, Rodney Clark is an outside threat. Razorbacks have very few offensive options so in this sequence. So you think Henry should have shot the ball left? No, no. I'm just saying. No, no, you, you may be right. I mean, they don't have a lot of options. Well, Washington was out of the game. Nice trap, something. Oh, come on. They're big fellas out there. Robust. In peak condition. <laughs> Nothing like a little chest pump. Britt gets the foul. This yeah. fourth. And this is something part of the preparation. Oh, God. <laughs> well, look, there's been a lot of pressure on Washington and Clark to score. Stefan Wolf does remain out there, but he's got very few friends. Maybe Henry, the only other scoring threat for the Razorbacks. Kentucky now with it with the 20 to shoot. And more over here on Meeks. Just give it to him. 
look at him out here. He's got a guy that he can beat. Now they switch it back too late. Nice pass. Miller in traffic. Stevenson gets the loose ball and drains it. Well, well, great for Kentucky. Presence very good. Six points for Stevenson. Welsh again rushing it on the offensive end of the floor. I uh, just can't get away with that. And this guy in the open floor. Look at this pull up a little bit. Going forward, made it a long shot. Harris saved it. They're on the deck. You got to be careful. Everybody running over there. Just stay away. Meeks comes over there quickly as they try to separate them. Good piece of officiating, really, by both Pat Adams and Mike Stewart. Sure is. Make sure it's high ball. And Pat Adams, it's like a recovered fumble and he came out of there. <laughs> Going the other way. First and ten. Now, this is the miss by Meeks and then the rundown, uh, but his momentum was carrying him forward. And right there, just that little add on. Sometimes it gets a little unattractive, but as you said, well controlled. So much for the spread offense in, uh, in basketball here. <laughs> well, they've seen some offense in this building. And the big nasty one in the Hall of Fame in our Yes, he did. And they're going to be honoring, by the way, next week. Uh, Nolan Richardson's 94 national championship team happy to see that, that the uh, relationship between Nolan and the institution is, is being restored and then we lost it again this one I think was uh, no last touch by the Razorbacks I believe we may get an overrule yeah, Doug Sermons right. may have seen a deflection he did so the Razorbacks will retain possession Jody Meeks pleading out by half court uh, looking for some help but to finish with Nolan, it's just a great coach, what he accomplished here. Absolutely. It's not the way it should end, so this is perfect. Perfect setting, bring all the guys back. John Pelfrey's really embraced uh, Nolan Richardson. I think has a lot to do with the relationship being restored. Well, stop there. Oh, nice check out by Stevenson. Meeks clears it. He rode Washington right out of the tip area. Also, Charlie Spoonhauer going in the Hall of Fame, I noticed, too. Some of the great characters of the game. Great company, witty. Some of the things that have escaped us. <laughs> Saw James Dickey during halftime, who was a longtime assistant of Eddie Sutton, of course, uh, most recently at Oklahoma State. He was on the staff for many years here as well when he was coaching in Arkansas. Not a good play for a guy like Henry. Oh, a whirling dervish. Beautiful job playing the passing lane. That's what they need, those open floor opportunities with the defense not set. Picking the ball up there is not good. Offense, yep. Mike Stewart agrees. Tags Porter. And here comes the crowd in Fayetteville again. Uh, you can't subdue them, but did you say, oh, oh, Henry? <laughs> the ability to spin and drop step, but all set up by extraordinary defense. Great balance, and he's playing on a gimpy leg. Spin, baby, spin. <laughs> and that's what he was able to do there. 12 points, nine boards for him. There you see the story now, Arkansas creeping back into this thing. Able to finish games has been one of their problems. Washington the flush. The lead is down to 11. They creeped this close once before and Meeks took over. What this time, timeout. Oh, he did not get the timeout. Yeah, Locked he away, he, he did give him the yep. timeout before the steal. Listen to this crowd. How about the ability of the crowd excited because of the stick tuners of Washington. He delivers in traffic. Send it in, big fella. Tim Brando, Bill Raftery. Bill, I'll never forget the 1992 SEC tournament. First year Arkansas was a member institution. The collective jaws of the Kentucky fans, and he was playing for them back then at that tournament. It signaled the beginning of a new era in this conference. These fans are special as, uh, special as, as any you'll find in the, in the Southeastern Conference. And when he gets his talent in here, this is going to be a terrible place to come and perform. And right here, they got the full court pressure. Boy, that was the lead. Fortunate to get it in. 13 to 3 run for the Hogs. To meet a reversal. And that's what the danger is when you press. You expose a great talent at the other end like Meeks. Welsh. Looking for Henry. Don't be in a hurry. Get it up. Get it off the floor. He has a habit of bouncing a little bit too much. 
Must match Meeks. He nearly got a steal there. Henry in traffic. Steve, I believe we've got a piece against Stevenson. Yep. They're going the other way with it? Yep. I think they're going to tag a foul on Washington. They do. Now right here, you don't get anything easy with the long arm of the law. And right there, I'm not so sure. Well, I guess they get tangled up. Somebody's got to get it. Miller at the free throw line. Freshman, Maysville, Kentucky. Same high school that produced uh, Tennessee All-America, Chris Lofton. Mason County High School. Four points and six rebounds on the day for him. Tuesday on TV's number one new show, The Mentalist faces his most dangerous suspects yet. Simon Baker stars in a new episode Tuesday on CBS, America's most watched network. And, and Timmy, I know you'll agree with this. Uh, coming into Kentucky's practice last night, not seeing Bill tightly oh, for the first time. Miss uh, Mr. Uh, Wildcat. What a really wonderful good. human being. God bless him. I know he's entertaining up there. Uh, just a class act. Made everybody feel so comfortable. Loved his Kentucky and Kentucky University. Passed away shortly after the Final Four at a Cincinnati Reds baseball game. And was again doing what he loved. Washington in traffic. Oh, Ooh. it goes crying Tan on the rim. Tantalizing. But that's his game. I mean, he is a tough out. We've seen him step out and make a jumper. And now the blow by. This was in the first half. He did this on numerous occasions. And they spread the D and enable him to maneuver. Nice little high-low set. Perry Stevenson got the foul. His third. McGee, Arkansas. Michael Washington. Uh, playing last year against the Bigs. I mean, he outplayed. Hill and Towns helped I mean, him. We were talking about Blake Griffin and the incredible half of play he's already had today. That Greg Gumbel update a moment ago. For one night, he outplayed what could be the player of the year yeah. in this country. Michael Washington had his way with Blake Griffin the, in he, that victory. You know, you're, you're right. Blake is an extraordinary performer and probably will get that award. But uh, Washington's got a big upside. Really understands the game and the pressure. Again, Larry. Henry! Oh, it would have counted had it gone. He'll get back to the strike. You know, they're not running the floor. They're not screening and stepping back, Kentucky. And it's really enabled this pressure to impact on Kentucky. One of the issues well, a lot of times, Bill, you run into when you've got a great individual player like this one is uh, the teammates sometimes become uh, spectators watching them. And don't forget this week, Dave's uh, all new with Rules of Engagement star David Spade. Plus Monday, don't miss the winner of the Daytona 500 and Ellen Pompeo only on CBS. But, you know, it's interesting. I think a lot of times when you've never had a team oh, that's tough. dependent on one player to score as much as this one, you have to make an adjustment sometimes as a coach. Mm -hmm. Not that, that particular trip wasted when you don't make the free throws. Empty trip. Uh, Meeks just drags so many people, gets the attention. I think if Patterson and he on the same side of the oh, yeah. floor, you got great passing lane. There's the strength and the block. We didn't have a good angle to see it, but this kid is aggressive. It's the tank coming at you to me. Oh, He's aggressive. He's strong. That's number four on Washington. Jody Meeks on 14 of 21 shooting has 38 points to lead. Kentucky, they're up 68-55. This was that disputed block charge a moment ago, which is the fourth foul on Washington. Well, Timmy, I never liked the second guess because we didn't see it live. But you can see the feet are set, and this is why Pelfrey was so upset. And obviously the fourth foul, a major dilemma, and sometimes you, you know, just don't get that kind of call turned against them. Not pivotal, but important. Yeah, and uh, now Meeks at the free throw line looking to stretch this lead. Arkansas has gotten it to 11 on a couple of occasions, but Jody has decided to take over at that point. Those are very rare misses for him yeah. at the free throw line. 89% this season. And 
by the way, we should mention an enjoyable guy to be around. Jody Meeks is oh, a wonderful pleasure. young man. Look at his defense, too. I mean, he just doesn't play one end of the floor. Rodney Clark from downtown. Long rebound to Meeks. He's on the loose. One man fast break. Look at this guy. Yep. And they shouldn't have blocked it. And they got to score it. They got to score it. Boy, is he a train coming at you. I poor, mean, with poor, poor judgment on the block, too. Say, I would want to be a middle linebacker with him running at me, would you? I mean, this kid just comes at you, and unfortunately, I don't think that was going to go in. Now you got a chance for three. Well, he, he has missed a few this evening. This is or this afternoon, very much unlike him. He's leaving some food on the table there with 40 points and a few missed free throws. Sanchez looking to come in for Arkansas. Billy Gillespie, while we have this stoppage of play, is going to bring his guys over. Well, Dirk Sermon says, no, you're not. Those Get them back out here. Those free timeouts. This is a new Bud Walton arena record. 39 points by Al Dillard, the previous record. So this is the most points scored in this building by any player in its history. Well, he's comfortable any place he plays, isn't he? In yeah, Tennessee, bit. ringing the bell, knocking him down. 71 to 55, Kentucky, three and counting. And now you've got to score quickly if you're Arkansas. Get into your press. Get to the line. Porter picks up the foul. Boy, he played him pretty good. Man, he just reached down at the end. And uh, take a look at uh, our leaderboard for the third round of the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. Coming up immediately following, Jim Nance and the guys on the West Coast Swing. Latif Goosen still leading along with Dustin Johnson through 10 holes today. I know you've played out there. That is a beautiful place. Piece of property. The water gets into play once in a while for me. I, don't just know I just wish we could move the Pro-Am to, I don't know, April. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to get an invite. Yeah. Get inside those ropes just once. <laughs> you might have to pay for the ticket, though. I don't so that'll care. Leave, that'll leave by, you by out. By the way, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever it takes. When get I'm invited by you to play at Baldur's Roll, I pay. Uh, so well, what else is new? Get the press set, face guards. Let's see when they start to count. That was pretty sound. Yes, they did. Now milking clock, and why not? And Jody's got to get it 10 or under. Miller on the blow-by. Moore oh! had it and lost it. It was out of bounds. Last touch by Kentucky. Arkansas will get it. Let's take a look at the Southeastern Conference, and these teams... Without question, Bruce Pearl's got the toughest non-conference schedule and wins, of course, against teams like Marquette and Siena. Oh, right. And I think Georgetown as well. The South Florida. Carolina Gamecocks are sort of the eastern version of LSU. I mean, Darren Horn's team has done a great job this year. They sure have. Of course, they probably lost to Clemson College of Charleston, but Baylor. That's a good, good, good team that uh, Bobby Crimmins has, by the way. Oh, yes, yeah, no, not demeaning him at all. They have beat Davidson into their 27-game home win streak for Bob McKillop and Stephen Curry. I knew Darren Horton was going to be good the day I met him up at Marquette. Yeah, had him in, uh, in Tampa when they got those two big wins for Western Kentucky yeah. last year. Great foul for South Carolina. Miller again. Oh, it's Miller time. All right, no help coming from the offside for Arkansas. It's early in the day, but it is Miller time. <laughs> Welsh is bodied up by Miller, and he'll pick up the foul. Yeah, not a good play. You don't want to stop clock, but right here, the blow-by, and nobody home, as you noted. Everybody hugging their their guy and uh, his support group there. Anybody who's going to get a lot of minutes has a following on that bench. Billy, uh, even in the midst of a admitted down cycle for this conference, how many teams would you expect should get it at, at worst at worst five i mean you've got to respect the conference it might be six if somebody like georgia as georgia did last year mm -hmm. and darius miller with the foul out and that's uh, sort of useful exuberance exhibiting itself to stop the clock 
and give them an opportunity to make a couple. Well, here, here is the uh, issue right now. In the Western Division, LSU is sort of a runaway freight train. Mississippi State, you could argue, is playing better than anyone in the league other than mm -hmm. the Bayou Bengals. And then you have this uh, four-team conglomerate Going somebody's really for three spots in the SEC East, don't you think? Somebody's got to step forward, though. Yeah. Do you agree? Somebody has to emerge from that group. In the next couple of weeks. I get a feeling if Hobson starts hitting shots from outside for Bruce Pearl, that team now with Josh Tabb and uh, and certainly the other point guard, Bobby Mays, is coming along. And Mays, uh, they may shot have, Mays, huh? By the end, I think Pearl's team may oh, I agree. have the ingredients. I saw them early in the year when Prince got hurt, actually, in practice at Temple. Yeah. And that started them to just miss the beat a little bit. As good as uh, Nick Calathis is, there's just not enough help for Billy Donovan's team inside. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're playing well. Werner has been outstanding for them. Right, Tyus, KG. Look at this, the breakout. Say goodnight. Nothing weak about it. Just a... Another one in the column, up to 43 with 143 in counter. Now, if Billy Gillespie hadn't taken him out, he may have gone over the number, huh? You can lay this one on Billy. <laughs> uh, well within himself. I can't think of more than two or three shots. That's the presence that they have. Stevenson. The long arm of the law. Yeah, second, Sorry. second in the uh, country in block shots. And when they have Patrick Patterson, there are usually more for them. Right up there with the likes of uh, Mississippi State. And Connecticut and Stevenson with the grab and Billy Leslie going why don't reach down we mentioned earlier the SEC East a uh, four-team race which one of these clubs uh, will emerge and of that group as we said uh, Tennessee has the best case with non-conference victories but uh, all of these teams can be heard from clearly and, and you know, nobody's nobody's saying about Vandy I mean Vandy could get it yeah, get it could get hot too, you know at the end four and five in the conference He's just so good at home, 10 and 4. Had them against Ole Miss. They played very well. Florida rang the bell from deep on them that particular day. Parsons. Well, I think he's real, really the key for Florida to improve, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, if he makes shots like that they, with their dribble drive and extending your D, again, pieces real solid. Keep Meeks at the other end because he can make a definitive statement if he catches it, whether to go or hold it. Harris will get to the free throw line. The more you watch this Meeks, though, uh, I just respect his camaraderie with his team. Great feeling. Look at that. Those numbers are pretty outstanding. 43, a new arena record here at Bud Walden. Harris gets them both, and it's 77 to 62. There will be better days here at Arkansas, and without Courtney Fortson today, as you see Clark taking it to the rack, he's fouled, he'll get to the strike. He did that yesterday in practice. I mean, he just uh, extends that left and tries to ring the bell. Bring it all. Kentucky not given an inch to him as he got to the rim. And it really says a lot in a, in a lot of respects, Bill, that this team could be at the bottom of the conference and have non-conference wins, albeit at home, against Texas and Oklahoma. This is a, a very young league, but it's always athletic. And uh, no no conference has ever had more teams, more different teams, in the Final Four than the SEC. Well, 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 I think that's exactly what we were talking about earlier. It's a conference. Once you get in it, you know, the competition level, no matter what, and people may not consider you the top conference, it is very tough to win as you go around this league. Well, no, one has to, no one has to travel further either than Arkansas. They are the right. westernmost team in this league. Leaks again. Sent it in with authority. 45 for Jody Meeks. He runs on his toes. He's like a prize fighter. I mean, he's always into it. And they know and recognize him when he's in the open floor. This is a guard, folks. Look at him weep. And John Pelfrey's like, fellas, we can't allow him to slam dunk.
Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Jody Meeks of Kentucky and the man that had the unenviable task of trying to check him, Stephon Welsh, who contributed 14 points for Arkansas. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university's general scholarship fund to support the development of new technologies and innovations. You know, it's all about winning, and Arkansas obviously uh, is going to lose this one. Uh, but their attitude, they came back a couple of times, tried to get involved. Uh, the difficulty, the short bench, they're... Starting point guard, not Courtney Fortson out. The coach's decision, it, it's just, uh, tells you a lot about them, though. Uh, and John. Absolutely. And uh, memories of those two consecutive home losses at Rupp and three of the last four for Kentucky are coming to an end. Nice job by Stewart. You know, in his own way, he made that three early. It gave him a little confidence, a boost on the perimeter. Wildcats will move to 18 and 7, 7 and 3 in the SEC. And for Arkansas, that elusive second victory still waits in the wings. For Bill Raftery, Tim Brando, nice to be with you, Governor. It's a lot of fun. Great atmosphere. Kentucky's Let's, back, I think, huh? Absolutely. Let's get you back to our studios in New York. Brett Gumbel is standing by on the road to the Final Four. Gumby, back to you. Tim Brando, Bill Raftery, thanks very much. Let's send you off to Tucson, Arizona, where UCLA has mounted a...